Hello and welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, National Sales Manager for Bona Adhesives. And I'm Rob Johnson from Bona Training. What do you say, Rob? Oh, how are you today, partner? I'm doing fantastic. Referrals, do's and don'ts, right? That's what you're going to call this episode? Referrals, do's and don'ts. Okay. All right. All right. Um, one thing I'm going to say that I am... I'm becoming more alarmed by this doesn't even really necessarily, this is in life in general, uh, in just not even, it, it, no matter what industry you are, what you do for a living. Holy smokes. I'm seeing these young, young people put stuff on their, on their social media, Rob, that man, it's got to come back to haunt you sometime. Right. You know, I mean, it's just so much out there about your life. You so I, I just, uh, I, Man, it, scares, it would scare me to be, you know, even getting into universities and getting jobs. I mean, everybody goes and looks at your social media. Some of the stuff that's out there right now that people are putting out there is crazy. Not only- Too much information. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. What the hell's the matter with- You really, you, you just nailed it too. That's one of the first things that colleges, job, uh, you know, trying to get a job someplace, first thing they do is jumping on your social media and seeing yeah. what kind of a whack job you are. Speaking of whack jobs, yeah, have you ever, you know, have you been on TikTok? I've seen it. Okay, don't I've get seen it. It's a waste. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's the reason why I don't play video games. You know what I mean? Because I don't play video games whatsoever because I think I would enjoy it. And that's why I don't do it. I just, I can't devote that kind of time to something, man. I mean, you know what I mean? It just doesn't seem like, that's just me, but I, I yeah, don't do videos. That is so funny you said that. Back in the late 90s, I was, I, I played pinball. I like, you know, pinball. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or at a bar, you know, playing Space Invaders or something. I never played that stuff at home. And then... Uh, Bone got me hooked on a game called Doom. And uh, it just kind of took my life over there for a while. Every night, all night long, Doom, Doom, Doom. Yeah, that's what I'm That was the of. last time I ever got into playing any games. Because the funny part about this Doom was, you know, of course, you're going around and you're, you're killing bad stuff, right? And then... You know, you, you get better at these games and you get closer and closer to the end. And it was the funniest damn ending to anything I had ever seen in my life. Like, I finally made it. I mean, and you, you're standing on a podium at the end of Doom when you win. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know? Yeah. And then the podium melts you and you're dead. And then this <laughs> thing comes across and says... I forget the exact words, but it's like, this is what life really is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I, I couldn't believe it. I was in absolute shock and that that's how they ended it. Here, I think, you know, I'm going to walk out into a beautiful forest and you, yeah. you found the key out of the cave, right? No. Mm -hmm. At the very end, after you wiped out everything, it kills you. And that's yeah. it. That was the end which I kind of thought was pretty funny because the guy who must have developed it. Yeah. Since he must have just been cracking up like, yeah, because I know that I was in shock and then I just kind of thought, all right, that was kind of funny. That was a cool way to end it. Um, <clears throat> the only uh, video games I ever played was remember John Madden. Yeah. When it first came out football. Um, I never, I was, uh, never got into those. I played with one guy who's such a bonehead that the games turned out so miserable every time because he would run one play that no matter what defense I put it in, he would score a touchdown every time on that one play. So when he got the ball, he'd go back, he'd throw that, he'd throw that, that one play, and it was a touchdown every single time. I couldn't stop it. What kind of game is that? So when I got the ball, I could gain three and a half or I could gain 10 yards every time, three yards, three yards, four yards. And I would – I would take up every second of the clock before I'd have to snap the ball and run the same three plays that he couldn't stop. So he'd have the ball in 13 seconds, 
he'd score a touchdown. Me, I'd take up an hour to score a touchdown, but I would score a touchdown. So you're Bill Belichick. You, you're Bill Belichick. You didn't even know it. But it, it's it's what kind of what kind of half which would play a game like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> Why don't you run another play? Well, you can't stop this one. Well, then here we go. I'm going to do that. Now Wayne wouldn't Wayne wouldn't be talking about any of our listeners calling them halfwits if you're a gamer. I'm you talking know, about there's a lot my, of gamers out there. No, I'm talking and, about uh, I'm talking about my friend and I who it was almost like a you're calling yourself a halfwit. Okay. That's what yes, what I said. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about referrals, do's and don'ts. So Rob, go ahead. You uh you you sent some notes over. So uh go ahead and start it off. Well, um, you know, it's something that we talk about in the schools extensively. And um, you know, my grandfather used to have a saying, Robbie, everybody knows 150 people. And if you do a good job, they'll they'll tell 35. If you do a bad job, they'll tell 80. And he says, if you mess up a barber's house, forget about it, move out of the town because those guys talk to everybody. But now we fast forward to social media. I mean, those numbers could be a thousand, you know? And some of the guys who have come into the school have showed me some of their reviews on Yelp or whatever. And people can get really, really crazy. So you know, I think what we want to be talking about today is what can help you with referrals and more, not what can really help you, but what can really hurt you, you know. Um, and the other thing about referrals, referral money isn't how much. Referral money is when can you get in here, okay? If you're being referred by somebody, they know what the price is going to be. You know, you, you don't have to sharpen up that pencil. They know exactly what the job is going to, uh, what the job's probably going to cost her, you know, from the other referral that they got. Every job before, during, and after, you have to be driving to get that referral. And the other thing about it is you have guys working for you. They have to know everything about this too. You know, they, they're representing you. So they're the ones who could be killing your referrals without you even knowing it. Yeah, no, no question. And um, got nothing. <laughs> wow, you must have something on your mind today. All right, Wayne, let's get into the don'ts. Maybe this will shake the cobwebs out right off the bat. Stay away from politics, especially in the climate that we live in today. Oh, talk about a hot topic. I, I don't I don't even want to ask somebody if they've been vaccinated. I mean, because it's all become so political. So watch politics, bumper stickers, stuff in your clothing, hats. Man, just, you know, you think about the Trump hat and the issues that just wearing a red hat, not even a red Trump hat, even people just wearing a a red hat can cause issues, which is insane, but that's what it is. I mean, it's out there. Yeah, bumper stickers. I've seen bumper stickers get a guy run off a job. Uh, the uh, the uh, homeowner called the general contractor and said, I don't want this guy in my job. And he couldn't understand why. And what it boiled down to was his bumper sticker. <clears throat> it was a religious thing or whatever, and it rubbed the guy the wrong way. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that van is an extension of your, you and your business and everything. And uh, so it just, there's no need to go there. I've said many times on the show, we are an expert in one small box in this world of hardwood floors. Don't get outside that box and start talking about other things because it just, and even if the homeowner doesn't, because I've done this myself, I've had a guy talk to me about something that, that his, his views are completely opposite of mine. And I don't say anything. I just go along with it. Because whatever, I got, for instance, I had an Uber driver the other day, went on and on about some political stuff. And I disagreed with everything he said, but I didn't tell him I disagreed with everything he said, because I don't care what he thinks. I'm, I'm trying to get from A to B. So I don't want to argue with you right now. I don't want to get in this conversation. I've got things on my mind. I've, you know, I've got other things I want to, I'm, 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 you know, distracted by. But would I use the guy again? Whatever. No, I, I would no part of this guy. Um, actually, 
He also told me he scammed the system better than I've ever heard anybody in my life. He had the Uber driving down to a science, down to um, um, how much money he could make in a year and still still qualify for, for food stamps and, and how much tax he had to pay. And I mean, he had an absolute, he had the system down to a science. So, but, the, but I, I, even that, I didn't want to talk to the guy because I just, you know, some guys, sometimes you're in the mood to talk or whatever. Some, sometimes you're not, but I'm going to the airport. We just had a meeting and I, I'm thinking about the meeting and I've got my own things going on. I don't want to hear this guy's anything he has to say. So, um, you know, be, and you see guys that like, some guys are talkers. Like they really want to talk. We've all seen sales guys like that. We know people like that. They just talk, they, you know, they, they, you know, they're talkers or whatever. Not everybody likes that. You know what I mean? Especially if you're having a guy do a service for you. Some, some people might be fine with that, but I, I don't like a lot of chit chat. You know what I mean? I, I, to me, you're there to do a job. No, you're the chit chatter. You, you don't like a lot of chit chat. You're the, you're the chit chatter. You're the carrier. Uh, that's 100% wrong. No way. You love to talk. No, I talk on this show more than you because I have to. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Everywhere. I'm, I'm not a talker. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Yes, but I. You're a good talker. You like to talk. You like to tell stories. I'm not saying that you're a talker in a bad way, like you're yeah. talking about. Okay. You're a talker in a good way. You got to be able to read the room, as we talked about before. Yes. Many, many if, I, times, if I'm with people right. I, I enjoy or whatever, whatever, yes, for sure. But business is business. You know what I mean? And and if it's Yes, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Matter of fact, yeah. there's sometimes um when I'm out of town and I know everybody's gonna get a big laugh out of this, but uh I'll uh, I have a couple of spots that I like to go get my hair cut and beard trimmed, right? So a haircut for me is really shaving down the head, right? A nice good head shave. And I have a couple of places that I really like to go, which is one in Atlanta and one in uh, North Carolina. And I thought I found, uh, so I started, I went to this place in Nashville, right? And as soon as I sat down in the chair, this woman started just ranting politics and never stopped talking. And it was complete opposite of my politics. Where talk about not being able to read the room, okay? And you know, I I got to the point where I was almost thinking, I think I'm just gonna get up and leave. I'm gonna tell her we're good here. Let me go. That's a I've never felt like that in a barbershop ever in my life. Ever. And this woman kept it going and kept it going. Well. You know, I barely left her a tip. I mean, I gave her the tip for doing the haircut, but I'm a very good tipper. I pride myself on being a very good tipper. I'll, I'll second that. She about got you. a tip, okay? She didn't get a Johnson tip. She got a tip. But I would never, ever go back. I wouldn't even go back into that barbershop. And it was all because she just kept ranting. I, I just couldn't believe. I was really shocked how much she kept talking and wouldn't shut the hell up about politics, her politics. And, and that's a great example. You never say anything to her, right? Not a word. But you'll never use her again. Ever. And I think that's so important because I think a lot of guys talk themselves out of jobs like that. Uh, you know, you think the homeowners, you know, because you're, you're talking because they're polite. You think you can kind of go down this road. It's never, never, never a good idea. Listen, not only would I not use her again, I wouldn't go to that shop ever again. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I, it, was, I, it was right by the airport. Really, you yeah. know, nice to get to. Never would I go back there again. So the shame of that is, you know, doing floors is hard, right? I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into that. And to let one thing distract, detract from your great work. To me, is just, I mean, why even take the chance? I don't, there's certain things that are just off limits. You know they're off limits. Don't, I don't even, I, I don't, it's not even worth going there. Like I said, I don't, because I don't want to get in an argument with people. The Uber driver, I, I, it's not even worth my, my, my effort to, to, to take the other side of the, of, of the, uh, the argument or get engaged with them. So for me, I would just, I, 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 you know, 
I gave the guy a good review because I'm a sap and I always give guys good reviews because <laughs> I'm also found out that they also give you reviews. So I'm not sure how it works. It's like just gonna say you gave him a good review because you wanted a good review back. Well, that I don't know the system yet. Is like, do, when do they know I gave them a review? You know what I mean? It's like, do they if I give them like a three star or four star review right now? Do they see it right away, or does it like, you know, at the end of the day, it shows up and they'll forget who I am? You know what I mean? So my, my review is like four point eight nine or something like that right now, and I'm shocked that it's not a five point oh. I, I I'm so. I want to I want to talk to the idiot who who didn't give me a five star review because I'm I'm charming or or neutral and I always give a, a good tip. So anyhow, what's your next one? Religion. Well, we kind of covered that. Yeah, politics and religion kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Um this next one we just had it uh, a couple of weeks ago at a school when we were talking about referrals and everything. And what could be a turnoff and uh, the aroma of nature's legal in some states harvest. You know what I'm saying? When people go in there smelling like a Cheech and Chong movie. And this guy was saying that, you know, he did a great job. Everything was good. Loved the job and everything. And she immediately told him, I would not recommend you to any of my friends because... I could tell that um, you were smoking marijuana. I could smell it on you. And it's got, you can smell that skunk a mile away, you know? And there he did. He, he did a great job, but no referrals coming from that job. And like I said, all the work you do to get that great referral and to blow it over something like that just seems crazy. But um, you know, you and I have been around for a while, and we know there's a, there's a lot of that aroma floating around the wood floor business. Yeah. I was on a job one time, and there was two carpenters, young carpenters. Maybe they were apprentices, but uh, their job was to kind of, there was some squeaks in the subfloor issues that they had to fix before we got there. And the carpenter called me. He goes, hey, there's one squeak they can't get out. It's in the kitchen area. Can we, if you're in the area, can you come by and look at it? I go, sure. So I went underneath the house. First of all, I'm talking to the two guys that, and they sm sm smell like pot. I go underneath the house to where they, they already had a drop light down there. They had been underneath the house. And when I went to the crawl space, there's a, there's a pipe sitting on the ground right there. And um, when I came up, I'm talking to the homeowner and she goes, man, these guys will never be back. I, I don't, you know, blah, blah, blah. That was it. It was a deal breaker. The guy had a great reputation as a contractor, but you know, because of that issue there, again, it's just, um, you know, you, you look at what the uh, the return on the investment is <laughs> and uh, the risk versus reward. And uh, this job is too hard not to get a referral on every job we do. Um, you, you live and die by your referrals, I think. Um, so, yeah, I agree completely. Okay. Music. Some, some, yeah. There are some incredible lyrics out there incredible i mean i put together a playlist i wasn't even thinking about it and one of the songs was playing and it had some some bad lyrics in it and there i am uh, sitting there with my grandkids in the pool and all of a sudden this song comes on geez i couldn't get over there and you know turn the turn the thing off quick enough and it never even dawned on me that you know, those lyrics were in that song until I was with the the boys. And like I said, that could be a huge turnoff to to a homeowner, especially if there's kids around. Yeah. If we're working in a house, uh, if we were working in a house, that's it's, uh, new construction or nobody's there. Listen, I love music as much as the next guy and probably more than most most people. I'm nothing like better than me and cranking up the tunes, man. It gets me pumped up if I'm doing an install. Sometimes we joked about Pantera, some other bands, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm that guy, man. I love listening to it loud. I, I, I am right there with you, man. I am. Yeah. I love listening to music. It just goes hand in hand with running the machines, coding. Yeah. Installing. Yes, but. If there's any homeowners there or any other trades there, we don't do it. If I have the house to myself, it's our turn. And it's a rare thing that it happened for us. 
Otherwise, you've got headphones and different things. But they're also, speaking of which, there is coding music and there is installing music. And they are two different uh, song, um, uh, what do you call it, um, playlists for me. I don't, want the, I don't want the loud music when I'm coding. I, that has got to be, I got to dial it down. So I, it's, I'll, I'll show it to you on my phone. I have a playlist of that I call Final Coat. No kidding. And it's, I'm not saying that it's mild, okay, but it's soft. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not going to be uh, doing Thunderstruck when I'm pulling yeah. a coat, when I'm pulling a Final yeah. Coat. That is for installs or when I'm grinding. When I'm saying it, or tear out tear outs, you need to have. You got to go. You got to go heavy metal, tearing out. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. sometimes when you're running a drum, you, you want that grinding type music too. I want to. Yeah. I'm thinking thunderstruck in my head when I'm running a drum. I love that. That's my yeah. thing. Yeah. It's got a good. I don't. It's got I a don't. good rhythm to it. And as you're moving that machine, it's almost like you're. But We're moving to the music, man. When I'm running the big machine, I don't have music on. I, I'm, I'm, I might have music on, but I don't have headphones on. I want to hear the tsh, tsh, when I'm touching down or picking up. I, it's got to be gently as I got to kiss that floor, and I, I can't have heavy. I can't have music in my ear when I'm doing that. No matter how many, many long I've been doing it, whatever, I still I got to hear it. Same thing, by the way, when when someone's running a buffer, there shouldn't be any music playing when someone's running a buffer. Especially on a quarter sawn floor or a uh, um, a common grade floor, I want to hear the tsh if I hit a shaky board from the from the, from the uh, from the buffer. You can you can kind of hear it and feel it. And uh, if I got music playing, I don't want that. So I, I pick and choose the times. But I think when you're running a buffer, I don't want to hear music. I don't want, I don't want to be any music playing in the job period. So I'm usually singing by the time I'm running the buffer. Yeah. All right. What's next? Chewing gum, chewing tobacco, smoking. Yeah. I just think it's something you might not want to do in front of the homeowner. Yeah. You know, and the other thing, too, is you can mirror what a lot, lot with your homeowner. You can kind of tell. If you got a homeowner that smokes oh, like a chimney, whatever. Maybe you can ask them if it's okay, that type of situation, but it all depends on the, uh, uh, on the, on the, the homeowner for me. But yeah, chewing tobacco and those type of things, yeah, that kind of. Uh, yeah, that can be a huge, huge turnoff. And the, like I said, we just keep talking about what could be a huge turnoff and you wouldn't think twice about chewing gum or chewing tobacco or something like that. Uh, using their bathroom. Some guys don't know how to use a bathroom, period. We had a guy, we both know this person, that I, I mean, always plugging up the toilet. What's the matter with you? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yes, using it, obviously you want to ask first and everything. Um, it is really a bit of a turnoff when a homeowner tells me we can't use the bathroom, that we have to, you know, now we have to go find one down somewhere else, which really is insulting to me. You know what I mean? But um, but I don't make the house rules. The house rules are the house rule. And by the way, um, it's not a bad idea when you're bidding the job to tell people, here are our company rules, our house rules. I want to show them to you. And here's what we don't do and whatever. If there's something we've missed or something that's particularly annoying to you, uh, let us know. But my guys don't do blah, 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 down the line. Uh, when you talk about up at the start of the job, we all say, you and I all say, I mean, this is so big to us. Labor shortage is real. We can't do more jobs in a year because we don't have the manpower. So how do we make more money? And one of those is to be able, is to charge more money per job. And the way you can separate yourself uh, and differentiate yourself from other people, I think this is a great one. Say, listen, this is our company rules. My guys know to adhere to this. And um, if we've missed something, blah, blah, blah. Maybe there's something that particularly annoying to you, then you let us know. We want to make sure we, we, you, that you understand where we know we're a guest in your home. And man, talk about putting somebody at ease. We, oh God, uh, 
Oh, this bathroom one I love because it wasn't me. It was Pete. Pete did it, not me. Pete, Pete goes in and uses some uses his what? Throwing Pete under the bus. Oh, big time! And he he he's gonna remind. He's gonna talk to me about this one. I guarantee. He uh, we uses a bathroom. Kind of plugs up the toilet. And he flushes it, and it was, it went down, but the water didn't come back. You know what I mean? It was one of those. I've read about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. So he flushes again. He made the rookie mistake. He flushes again. Now the water is just flooding out of the toilet, actually heading to, into the job that we're working on, heading onto our floor. So... He's grabbing towels. He's grabbing all the towels he can, right? He's mopping up the floor with this lady's towels. Then he puts them in. Now he's gone for a while. I'm like, where the, you know, I even kind of knocked on the door. I go, hey, everything all right? He's like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's washing the towels out in this oh, lady's no. tub. Oh, now they're not covered in anything, right? That had gone. It was the second one that, you know, threw the water everywhere. Well, don't you think we come walking? Now, he's done everything that he could do, right? Wash the towels. He's laying them out to dry. and But he used, like, every towel in this lady's bathroom to, to fix this. Yeah. We walk in the next day. And the lady is like, who used my show towels? Those are show towels. Oh. And she starts screaming at us that they're not even towels to be used. They're just show towels. She has special show towels in the bathroom, right? Nobody in this house uses those towels. Now, I got to kind of, I just got to kind of turn because I'm thinking, you know, for once, I, I have nothing to do with this. this is all Pete. And I'm usually the one who does all the talking, but. Pete's got to do all the talking on this, okay? Yeah. Long story short, we get a job a couple of weeks later. And the first thing the lady says was, hey, do me a favor. Don't clog our toilet, okay? And she starts <laughs> laughing about it. We had, we had three people. One of them was the, the woman's daughter. We did her house. She talked to us about not clogging the toilet. And two other customers. This lady was still giving us referrals, but telling everybody, make sure they don't use your bathroom. You're not going to believe what they did. It was the absolute funniest thing. I just kept looking at Pete thinking, all of this and none of it's on me. This is all on the worm. Perfect, man. Just perfect. But people, hey, we're glad you're here. You know, looking forward to the floors, but please. Please, you know, use the bathroom in the cellar or, you know, take it down to the gas station. There was no painters on the job you could blame? Point fingers <laughs> no, it, was ju it was just us. Just us. We're all residential. When there's painters on the job, that gives you a free license to do a lot of different stuff. You know what I mean? You can make yourself at home when there's painters on a job because especially if you're highly referred, you could always just, even if you don't say it's a painter, you just go, well, you know, the painters, uh, you know, it just kind of just kind of lay it on them. Um, let's see, eating and drinking. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, you know, dipping into somebody's refrigerator if you're a little hungry. Yeah. Unless you get the painter there, then you, you do the Wayne Highlander. I love uh, that one. I told you about that. Yes. Yeah, a little. Tell everybody. I just in case they didn't hear. Now, as I said, this happened when we were very young in our career. My brothers and I kind of raised each other doing floors. We, we did this very, very young uh, when we got into this. And uh, the homeowner was gone. And uh, I see my brother making soup. Um, I mean, a pan and making soup on the stove. And I, and I go, what the hell are you doing? He goes, oh, it's, it's OK. It's, uh, I got it figured out. I go, what do you mean? He goes, check this out. He had dipped his fingers in, in a little bit of paint, like put it, touch the microwave dial on the, uh, 
on the uh, on the microwave, and he, you know, a little bit of little paint on the uh, side of the. Uh... So instead of um, instead of trying to hide his tracks, he just totally incriminated the um, the the painters. That is, it's a good journeyman booth. Yeah, that was a. I love that. That's a good one. And that was your brother who did that, not you. I thought it was you. No, no, no. All right. Uh, this is a good one. And we've seen people get in a lot of trouble for this one. Uh, being somewhere you shouldn't be in their home. If everything is you're working on the first floor, no reason for you to be on the second floor. Uh, I think it was about a year ago, the NWFA put out in their their um, weekly email that a contractor in California had been arrested for trespassing because the lady had him on video uh, on the second floor where there was no reason for him to be on the second floor whatsoever. So uh, definitely don't want to, and you know, is she ever going to give that company a referral? No way. Yeah. Yeah. I did a job in San Francisco one time. It was an insurance job. And uh, keep in mind, is myself and my two brothers, all Highlanders on the job. And uh, the, the breaker, the breaker blue, we're working on the first floor. All the work is on the first floor. We check everything on the first floor. There's no breakers on the first floor, no panel. There's no basement. So it's got to be upstairs. And I've called and called. I called the insurance company and left them a message. Hey, we're, we're, we don't have power. I want you to make you aware. I can't get out, get hold of the homeowner they're out of town and in order to finish this job i have to check the break upstairs so i, I want to make sure i covered myself there and um so we went upstairs and usually in this setting in in san francisco in these homes you know we're there quite a bit it's going to be in the master bedroom and sure enough when the master bedroom turned it on i put a note in, in the kitchen and said hey be aware it's just such and such time i went up and, and the breaker we didn't have any breaker i, I called your number couldn't get a hold of you I left a message with the insurance company. But when I got there, he was standing there with the general contractor the next day. And he says, hey, we got a problem. Somebody here went upstairs into their master bedroom. I go, yeah. I said, I did. And he goes, yeah, but we can see this footprints on the carpet. The guy had, you know what I mean, cleaned the carpet yeah. blah, blah, or vacuumed the carpet. I said, here's the situation. I said, I own the business. The, other, the only two people on his job is my two brothers. I called and left you guys a message at your shop. I called you and, and you're on vacation and this job had to be done. I mean, we were told us explicitly when it gets, you guys get back, it's gotta be done, moving furniture back and blah, blah, blah. The power went out on the breaker and the guy's looking at me sideways. Like, I mean, I don't know how else I can explain you. I can see the way you're looking at me that you're not happy about this, but you know, you, maybe you can tell me what, what the alternative would have been. So anyhow, the job went on, but I was, I was very highly annoyed by it, man. Highly annoyed by it. But as it goes along with insurance work, problem with insurance work is they don't know us. We weren't referred. You know what I mean? Guys that do insurance work, I bless your heart, man. Uh, there can be very, very good things about doing insurance work. It could be highly profitable. And but but 99 percent of the jobs we did were referred by somebody else. And uh, so that was a turn off to me. So anyhow, if they were a referred customer, they would never have that conversation. So. All right. Yeah. But yeah, it's a very good point. Being somewhere where you shouldn't be, and certainly knocking on doors. You know what I mean? If you have before you enter any room, you're not sure about. Uh, you don't want to see anybody in a compromising position, or maybe you do, but maybe you do. Yeah. Not healthy for the job. Uh, what else you got there, buddy? Being late. You know, like I was today. Being late is well. I've said it's my number one pet peeve. Uh, I have been and working in California. There's three times in my career, the police, the police came to my car, pulled up behind me and they asked me who I was and what I was doing there. And this, the whole third degree, because I was there half hour early, you know, parked down the road or whatever, because I, I'd rather be there an hour early than be uh, five minutes late. And with the traffic in the Bay Area, you can never tell. So I, I found myself uh, in that position a few times. Jokes. Jokes goes along with the same same thing. It's not a chance. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially if they're not funny. Some people have jokes that yeah. they just miss. You know, you know what I mean? You know, I can't remember jokes. 
I, I know one joke that I tell. And that and I, I've, I've known that joke for like 15 years now, maybe longer. It's the only joke I ever tell. You're a storyteller. You're not a joke teller. You're a storyteller. But this joke is so good that it's my one joke, but I can't tell it. <laughs> that bad, huh? For the reason that we're talking about. Yeah. It's not it's that bad, but it's not that good. Listen, that story that you told about the U2 drummer. Yeah, that's a good is, story. That is one of the funniest. You're a storyteller. You're not a yeah. joke teller. Yeah. And that story, people are starting to use that as their own story. Okay. Oh, there you go. Like the Lionel Richie story. I saw you too at Fenway Park and mm -hmm. they started banging the drum for the starving yeah. kids. Yeah. And the guy yells out in a Boston accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great story. Yeah. All right. Uh, Language. Big time. Big yeah, time. and this is yeah. this is a bad one for me. I get uh, I get a little bit of a potty mouth sometimes, and uh, boy oh boy, I I was at doing a school up in Toronto, and I got a call from D, and he said, "You you got a complaint today, or you got a complaint yesterday from somebody at the Toronto school." for taking the Lord's name in vain, which is just a, a bad habit. You know, I guess we kind of go to religion. This guy was a religious guy. And, uh, you know, I was saying things like, you know, Jesus, that looks good. You know, that kind of thing. Where, so you just double. Yeah, yeah. So thought you double down right now, huh? Right. <laughs> well, you know what? And he's just absolutely given right. an example. I yeah. was given an example. Yeah. Of of even the most mild language. Yeah. Could get you in some trouble. Yeah. And with me. To his point, he's a customer of ours. So he was right. And uh, you know, it's a mistake, but if that if that's what he, he feels he's strong about, then he's he's right. So 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 here's what I did when we I got that complaint first thing in the morning. And I told the two guys I'm working with, I'm like, hey, you know, I don't even know when I'm saying this, right? So I went through a couple of presentations on the PowerPoint and everything. And I'm sure that, you know, I didn't drop one religious bomb, you know, because I knew it for a fact. Yeah. Because I was watching it. So I walk over to the guys and I go, how'd I do? And they both, same time, uh, six, six times. Oh. I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, but he goes, you're not saying it like you're insulting him. It's just, and they were just, because they thought, they both knew that I was expecting, oh, zero. Right? And he said, no, it was six times. And I was like, Jesus. <laughs> um, Complaining workers, tired, overwork, and pay, et cetera. Boy, oh boy, is that that's a that's a good one. I would not have, not have thought about putting that on the list, but yeah, homeowners don't want to hear. Uh, um, you know, homeowners uh, do not want to hear the guys that are doing their floors are pissed. Nobody would. You wouldn't want a guy who's pissed working on your car. Yeah, you keep that in you house. Want a guy crying his eyes out working on your computer. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, that's, that's um that's a uh, that's huge I think cuz we've all heard it. You know? We've all we've all heard and nobody it. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> if you go to you go to a restaurant or whatever and a guy goes, "Oh, we only make 5 bucks an hour and our tips are crap." We no we, we, nobody cares. You know what I mean? Right. No offense, we're there to eat. Exactly. Um, Leaving behind trash, rags, dust, etc. Don't leave anything behind. Take it all. Nor do I, even if someone says, "I'll take that, I'll take care of that for you," like you know your stain rags or whatever. I would never let anybody do that. We take care of our own. Uh, we know we, we got to hand, handle responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, responsible, and uh, for 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 sure. But what is this keep uh, being creepy in general? Yeah, you should know that one. 
being creepy in general. I, I did kind of work with a creepy dude one time. So I kind of get that. Some people just yeah. not very self-aware. And uh, that's a little, yeah, that's, uh, well. And I think the thing that, that they get, I mean, all of the stuff that we just talked about, I mean, most owners are going to do that. It's when their guys are out there representing them. I really think that you need to take a really good day or, you know, a half a day and, you know, bring in some food or something for the guys and really sit down and talk to them about how this is going to work. And then, you know, one of the things my cousins did uh, with their business was if they had no complaints and everything went great, their guys got like a $20 bonus a day. You know, now, yeah, you're thinking, ah, 20 bucks is, you know, it doesn't sound like much, but, you know, it's a hundred bucks a week. If the guys, but they had to have their uniforms, right? Their trucks had to, I mean, it was, it was everything right down the line, you know, zero complaints, zero callbacks. And he said that little 20 bucks really pushed his guys. But, you know, the whole thing, even, you know, the language, the jokes, this is something that you really have to sit down and explain to your workers why, especially young guys, you know, rookies, new kids. They're, they haven't been around the block like you and I, you know. Well, when, when you're young, you still think people care what you think. <laughs> you know. And as we get older. You think you your know. opinion matters. And then when you get older, you realize nobody cares what you think. Everybody's got their own thing going on. Um, Well-mannered and courteous, of course. Uh, that, that's huge. And I mean, um, kind of goes without saying. You know, let me jump back one more. Um, you know, I'm not saying that you guys need to be lifeless robots, okay? You, you want these guys to engage a little bit with a homeowner, be able to answer questions and things. But you've seen the guy that I'm about to talk about who wants to become part of their family. You, yeah. you know what I mean? He's going out of his way yeah. to strike up conversations and, yeah. you know, take a quick break and sit around and talk. And, you know, yeah. I'm like, you know, I, I mean, one guy, we had this guy who was a subcontractor for us and he was talking about all the toys this guy had in his garage. Right motorcycles and cars and this and that finally i you know i grabbed the kid and i took him outside i go shut up it sounds like you're casing the joint yeah. okay yeah if this guy gets broken into tonight you're you're top of the list man okay yeah. I, you know i get you're excited but you know just keep it to yourself okay yeah or hanging out with their kids you know what I mean? Talking to their kids and, you know, you know, whatever. Yeah, or, or, you know what? That's right. Doing too much talking to the kids goes back to the top, the bottom one there. Just yeah. being creepy in general. Yeah. Looks like Corey's ready to play peewee football. He's a big kid. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, the, 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 nobody cares what you think. Exactly. Exactly. Well-mannered, courteous. I mean, that just... That just kind of goes without saying, but it's definitely something that that you might have to train your guys on how to be well mannered and courteous and how to talk to people. You know, that just might be part of the training for them to work for your company. It's it's tough because you really you know your body language around a customer is important, and body language goes a long, long, long way. I mean, even you you know, if, if a guy rolls his eyes, even. That's that's a violent offense to me. You know what I mean? If you, you know, whatever, or, or, or you're, you know what I mean? The homeowners are keying off everything you say and do. So just your body language and, and that, you know, if you're, if you're uh, polite and nice and look like you're happy to be there and everything. I mean, we used to hand them the newspaper and we walked in every day if their newspaper was outside by the curb. Here's your paper. We put the paper up front for them. You know, we put a towel down. We walk up, you know, for walk off our shoes before we walk in other areas. Uh, you know, there's so many things you can do to put the ball on your side of the equation. You know what I mean? To make make it like, all right, 
And also, uh, uh, we had a guest, Mike Betts from uh, All American Hardwood Floors in Nashville, made a very good point, I think, that they should know who the names of the guys working there are, because it makes it harder for them to complain about if they kind of know who you are. But if you're just three guys that doing the floors, then you're three random guys. And, you know, we talked about, I talked about that's why nobody tips maids or, uh, you know, housekeepers in, in, in hotels, because they're faceless and nameless. But if you knew that was, you know, Robin that was cleaning your room the last three days, and you know, you know, she's a nice, hardworking person, you'd be more apt to give leave a twenty dollars tip at the end of the uh, end of the day. But people don't do that, so that's just part of the manners, right? Yeah, introducing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, uh, another uh, one, and I think we were just talking about it. I want the guys. I want my guys to be outgoing but I don't want them to slather it on. Yeah. You know, we had just talked about that. A homeowner offers you a drink, smile and accept it. I don't know about that one, Rob. And I'll only say this, I'll say this why. Sometimes a homeowner wants that to happen. They want to give you something, okay? You You don't want to take that away from them. I'm not saying, you know, sit down and, have a six course meal but if a homeowner offers you a water because you look thirsty and everything yeah thank him very much and accept it yeah i would agree with that i thought you were talking about maybe a beer um no no oh no 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 yeah, yeah coffee or water there's there's you know you ever heard the expression of i don't trust a guy that don't drink i mean there's those guys that are out there and there's on a rare occasion if he's a, it's at the end of the day and he's having himself a beer and he's a, is that type of guy you can kind of you know what I mean I might then sometimes because it might appear rude if I don't yes. I'm not much of a beer drinker exactly in that case I'm not a huge drinker yeah but if I see a guy pop one yeah and he offers me one I am definitely going to smile say thank you you know that's a great time to you know yeah. talk a little bit yeah. And not, like I said, become part of the family, but. Smile and accept it. Yep. Yep. Now, if he uh, wants to go smoke a doobie, watch out. That could be a, that could be a trick. Yeah. Well, here's the, here's the only problem about having your guys do that is because that, when guys start to feel too comfortable with a homeowner, it scares me a little bit. You know what I mean? Yes. For instance, I never, one of my pet peeves with me is when a homeowner wanted to have lunch with me. Like we're, we're busting our butt all day, whatever, and now it's time for us to have lunch. And they pull up a chair and have lunch with us. This is my time now. That's a real problem. I, it's a, it's a, it annoys me, frankly. Uh, um, you know, this is our time to just, you know, because I'm always on if you're there, if you're a homeowner. I'm always, I'm always on. I'm working. But so that's my time. If he does it on Monday, on Tuesday, I'm going to eat lunch in the van. So, no, we, it, that was one of the reasons we always ate in the truck. Yeah, just for that. Yeah, because it is your time. You, yeah. you just want to decompress a little bit and not have to answer a bunch of questions. Yeah, I. So, yeah, keep it out in the truck. Yeah. All right. Here's a big one. All right. This is, and remember, we're on the do's list. This is the do to get the referrals. Be a great communicator during and after. Start of the job, have a nice outline of the entire project so the homeowner knows what's going to happen. Time frames, just in general. You know, we all know that, you know, we're, this isn't a, a watch here. Okay. We understand that. Things are going to happen. That we get, okay? But if the homeowner has some kind of an outline of what's going to happen, when the noise is going to take place, when the coatings are going to take place, that little bit of communication, I think, can go a a long, long, long way. Yeah, agreed. A lot of that is, too, when you're selling the job up front to let them know what to expect. And uh, that's noisy, it's loud, and these type of things. So hopefully they'll find other arrangements for where they're staying at. All right. We got to go through these pretty quick. We're getting up against the, the clock here, Rob. Uh, I had another guy at a class in Chicago, and he showed me the outline that he gives to people when the job is done. And I was like, that is one of the best things I've ever seen. 
It, the whole thing was about how to care for the floor. Weekly care, annual deep cleaning, future recoats. You know, this was his chance to build that lifetime customer. And he put together a really nice looking outline and he would give it to them when he gave them their cleaning kit and everything. It, that was genius. I thought that yeah. was really, you know, a lot of us, we give away the cleaning kit, but this guy really took it to the net. He left no questions unanswered about what to do now that we're done. You know, uh, uh, Jeremiah Strong is territory manager for, for us. Uh, when he was a contractor, he used to do something that, that I thought was really smart is that um, he would uh, buy a subscription for a year for a magazine like Bon Appetit or one of those different magazines that would show up every month with his name on it to the homeowner as a thank you. You know what I mean? That's kind of a cool reminder. Every month this magazine comes that, you know what I mean? So. You know what? That was, uh, that was something that, that was one of the bullet. That was the last bullet I had do something unexpected at the end of the job. Yeah. So Jeremiah, the magazine subscription and the thank you. Awesome idea. We had yeah. the guy up in Toronto. He's the plant guy. Two weeks later, after the check is cleared and everything, the homeowner gets a plant. Thank you very much for your, you know, thank you very much for letting us come in and do your floors or whatever. And the, I said a plant, huh? You know, it just kind of surprised me that plant and not flowers. And he said, plants never die. Every time they look at that plant, they're going to think of where the plant came from. Good idea. Because flowers will die and then they throw them away and it's gone. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, oh, that's genius. That is genius. I like it. All right. Um, uh, I think we covered them all, Rob. The only other thing that I can say, uh, I think we've covered everything, is that outline that you give the homeowner, make sure your guys have it too. Make sure your guys understand what that outline is also. Yeah. That way, when the homeowner's asking a question, just in case, everybody's on the same page. Because we know that can be an issue, too, with, you know, a guy saying, yeah, we're using semi-gloss. Well, you know, it's supposed to be satin. Oh, no, they told, you know, at the shop, I got semi-gloss. And you know what I mean? If everybody knows the outline, everybody's on the same page, everything goes smooth. Now you're going to get that customer for life. Yeah. I'm going to add one more thing is that um, never talk about the schedule uh, with the homeowner about other jobs that you're doing. Oh, you know, oh. It, never talk about that is huge. We got another job on the other side of town or we did this beautiful house. It was a three story mansion and Porsches in the garage or man, we've got a problem on this other side of town. They don't care about anything except the job you're working on and i they they don't they want to think you're 100 invested in their job and if you say oh we have another job on the other side of town on the third day two guys show up instead of three well what is he on the other job right right you just don't want to have those conversations that's awesome that's a really good one yeah uh, all right well rob i think we covered a lot of uh do's and don'ts in there for referrals uh, as you say, referral money is, uh, th there should be no negotiating. If, if someone says, hey, um, and you know they're referred by somebody, you're charging 450 a foot, you know, can, I, you, know, can you do it for three, 350 a foot? Four bucks a foot? No. You, Never you're, gonna hear that. Yeah, you're referred, and, and, and even if they go down that road, you, you can't, and that's, you know. You're, the question you're, with the referral is, not how much, but when can you get yeah. in here and do it? You're, yep. They're ready for you. Yeah. All right, Rob, appreciate it. Uh, this has been another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. Please stay tuned for another episode.